Hey everybody, this is Joe Slepsky from the Joe and Joe Podcast, the number one G.I. Joe podcast out there, and you are watching the Venom Vlog. There's a link to my podcast below, but thank you for listening to Seek Donnelly and the number one Venom Vlog in the world. What's up, everyone? Welcome to another episode of Spitting Venom, aka the Venom Vlog. This is episode 287, and today we're going to talk about those early thoughts that were put out there by critics of the Venom movie. And uh, last night, as you know, there was a world premiere here in Los Angeles um, and at the Westwood Theater, I believe. Really beautiful setup. I'll have some pictures, you know, popping up. Everyone, you know, got to sign autographs. You know, all the cast went by, signed autographs. Todd McFarlane was there, which was really cool. It was neat to see him. Uh, he got a picture with him and David Michelini, who is, uh, you know, the two of them co-created Venom together. And uh, they had some great shots of them there. Todd McFarlane went around, you know, just being like kind of a big goofball and a big kid. And that was awesome. I mean, it's really cool when they invite like the creators of the these characters. I hope that Marvel uh, invited the guy who did the initial black costume drawing, uh, who you know only got paid two hundred and forty dollars or whatever. Uh, that would be nice if he got invited. I don't know if he did or not. Um, but uh, you know, even though Spider-Man's not involved in this, but still, it's like, hey, the guy, the black suit came from somewhere. Uh, but uh, but I loved seeing those two guys, uh, Tom McFarlane and David. There, that was really great. Um, and then also the cast was there. Uh, Michelle Williams looked beautiful as always. Uh, everyone was look looking great. Uh, Tom Hardy was dressed like everyone was just. I was like, holy cow, man! Like movie stars, just like ridiculous, just ridiculous. They're not human beings. Uh, sometimes they just they're always like good looking and awesome. Um, so anyway, I was like, you know, watching some of that footage and seeing some of them going down the black carpet. They did a black carpet. I remember when Green Lantern did the green carpet and I was like, oh, that's cool. It's, it's kind of cheesy, but it's cool. And then same with this. I'm like, oh, I'm getting like those Green Lantern vibes. Uh, but, uh, you know, whatever, it's fine. Uh, the black ca carpet looked nice and it had like this big artwork piece with Venom as you see in the picture and stuff, um, in the background. And then, uh, you know, just had the press line. Everyone was going down. Uh, there's a lot of people there, you know, like when I went to Justice League, when I saw that premiere, they, a lot of stars that aren't in the movie and who are just like, I don't know, connected to like the, you know, the different agencies that work on the movie or they have a contract with Sony or something like that, like, or, you know, they're musicians, whatever. It's like, there's a bunch of people that show up at these things that I'm like, why are they there? Like, like Adrian Brody was at the Justice League premiere and I was like, why is Adrian Brody here? And I was like, maybe he's a fan. Maybe he's a, a DC fan. Maybe he's trying to get into a DC movie. You know, like he's just going to talk to people. Um, a lot of networking goes on at these events for sure. Uh, so yeah, it was interesting to see everything. But the most interesting part, obviously, and the most fun for a lot of us was seeing the early you know, reactions to it. And uh, before I get into the actual reactions, I do want to say it was really weird was that there's these bots. There's like these little stand bots, people call them. Uh, someone will have to explain that to me. I'm an old man. I don't know what's going on. Um, but these bots were like trying to push uh, Lady Gaga's movie, A Star is Born, which comes out on Friday, which also looks really good. I actually really like Bradley Cooper, and uh, I have a little bit of a crush on uh, Lady Gaga. She's kind of cute to me. And so uh, I saw that trailer, and I was like, hey, that looks like a like a pretty good, feel-good kind of movie, um, and like a good drama. But, uh, you know, obviously I'm a Venom fan, so it's like, well, I'm going to go see Venom opening weekend, but I'm most likely going to also see A Star is Born. But I guess there was people out there that were, like, creating fake accounts, uh, and they were just tweeting the same thing so it was like multiple accounts and you'll see i'll put like a picture here it's like you know four or five different people all posting like oh i was really looking forward to venom but i was disappointed uh so i guess i'm going to go see you know now that i saw the screening of venom for free i guess i'll pay to go see a star is born this weekend and they're just out there trying you know trying to generate buzz for a star is born and get that hashtag trending and stuff and it's interesting to me because it could just be fans doing it it could just be it could be a number of things it could just be like haters but i just saw all these people blaming each other i even saw dc fans getting blamed and i'm like whoa 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 slow down what what the dc fans are like yeah this is an elaborate ploy from dc fans to get like marvel fans to hate each other and blah 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 and i'm like trust me most dc fans i know that see the venom trailer are trying to give it a shot you know they're the ones who are like hey we don't want you know more mcu stuff we want to see things that aren't mcu related uh and that's i kind of in that boat too like i i like the mcu a lot i go see all those movies every time they come out I think the only one I didn't see in the theater was Thor Ragnarok, uh, but all the other ones I've seen in the theater. And so I like those movies fine, but uh, I do want other things uh, too. I want different flavors and different senses uh, of, of, you know, and different feelings from movies. And, uh, and so it's, I'm interested in Venom for sure. You know, as you guys know, and I've gotten more and more excited because of you guys pumping me up and, uh, and then just doing the show 
has pumped me up for it. And I'm a big Tom Hardy fan. I love the cast of this movie, Michelle Williams, everyone, Jenny Slate, uh, Woody Harrelson. I can't wait to see who all these people are playing because some of them are still a mystery to me, uh, which is I'm blown away by. Uh, but there are also... Um, uh, two post-credit sequences, and I saw people posting about those as well. So uh, that's interesting to me too. Luckily, I haven't seen what's in those post-credit se uh, se uh, post-credit sequences. Uh, but so I would say stay away from the comment section because people might uh, post those here. Uh, so just be you know warned of that. I don't. I mean, if it gets spoiled for me, it's not a big deal. I, I'm a grown up. I'll still see the movie, and it's not going to ruin anything for me. Um, my days of that kind of stuff is like kind of far gone. But uh, but anyway, so two credit sequences. I can't wait. Um, there's a lot of, you know, you know, bots going on and everything, but there are genuine feedback from the movie. And what I saw interesting, and you guys probably saw me tweet this, was that I saw that people who did kind of like the movie or defended the movie or said it wasn't as bad as everyone thought, they only did one tweet to say that. But anyone who didn't like the movie um, did multiple tweets. Or if they just liked the movie but they were critical of it, they did multiple tweets. And uh, it's interesting to me. I, it, I feel like that tells a lot about a person. <laughs> like, they're like... Hey, get your one tweet out there that it's good. And it's like, okay, there it is. And it's like, well, follow up. You know, I'm sure people have questions. So there was a guy like Brandon Davis here who was, uh, you know, answering people's questions. Like, hey, if you have questions, hit me up and I'll answer them the best I can without spoiling anything. And I thought that was really awesome. Uh, he says his original tweet was, action sequences and Eddie and Venom's odd relationship are the highlights of Venom. But if Sony wants to move forward with a universe, it needs to just keep the parts that work and scrap the large portion, which does not. Uh, so according to him, those were the highlights of the movie, and most of the movie, plot-wise, story-wise, character-wise, didn't work for him. Um, and again, you know, this is we we have to listen to criticism uh, as fans. You know, like that's just if we just shut someone off because they immediately like you know disagree with us, that doesn't help. You know, we want these movies to do well. All, you know, a lot of us do. And so, uh, so if we can find genuine criticisms to, you know, give feedback on, um, you know, that, that could help the next movie, uh, you know, that could help the, the few things we don't like. Cause I'm, I'm sure most of us aren't going to think this is a perfect movie. Um, and cause very few movies are <laughs> obviously Shawshank Redemption is, uh, no, no arguments there. Uh, but, uh, but you know, for this one, it's like, you know, we can have criticisms of it and, uh, and still like it, you know? And so, uh, but the, I think Brandon seemed like he mostly didn't like it, uh, from what it says here, but he did answer other tweets. So definitely follow him. Brandon Davis BD at Brandon Davis BD on, uh, on Twitter. Um, and then we have Scott Mendelson here. Scott Mendelson says Tom Hardy's performance in Venom is either Johnny Depp in the first Pirates of the Caribbean or Chris Klein in Street Fighter The Legend of Chun-Li. Either way, it's not boring. Uh, I think he went on to say one or two other things too. Um, I, I think I know this guy's name from somewhere. I think we've talked about some of his reviews uh, before on the show um, or some of his feedback. Um, he seems like a lot of writers out there where he's, he's more into you know, making like a catchy, awesome tweet. And, you know, like he's like more of the business side of things like, oh, I could spice up this tweet with this and I can reference Street Fighter, The Legend of Chun-Li or whatever. It's like, he, he seems like more of that kind of guy. And so sometimes his criticisms, I don't take, you know, fully uh, because I'm like, ah, he seems like he's just trying to, you know, make himself look, you know, <laughs> well-versed in movies or something. And he may be, and, and that's that's fine if he is. He should be. He's a critic. Uh, but sometimes I feel like he goes a little too far with the hyperbole. Uh, but anyway, either way, I, I found his tweet funny. <laughs> I was like, just to make me think of Street Fighter Legend Chun Li again. I'm like, you know what? I may not like your tactic, but it worked, and it made me laugh. Um, Perry Nimeroff, uh, I think she's from Collider. She said significant chunks of Venom don't work at all, but there is some serious charm to the Eddie Venom relationship. Not sure I had the intended reactions to some scenes, but fun is fun, even when it's totally ridiculous, right? It's too bad that they didn't go for the R rating, though. That's interesting. I saw a couple other people tweet this, and it's really weird to me um, with critics, too, because I feel like sometimes critics latch on to headlines that were around, like, oh, it's not a rated R movie. Oh, Spider-Man's not in it. They latch on these headlines, and they repeat them in their review, and it's like, Okay, so it's like I, I get the bringing up the rated R thing, but on a constructive level, I'm like, what did you, what were you, what, what did the movie do that you would have liked to see in the R version of, and why would that have improved it? Uh, you know, and maybe she didn't want to get into that because of spoilers. These are obviously tweets. They're going to put up their full reviews today, so we'll look at those when they come out. Maybe she'll explain more of what she kind of means by that. Um, then there's also this girl named the Moth Meg. Uh, who I guess is going to New York Comic Con soon, which is this weekend, for those of you who are going. If you are, let me know in the comments below. Um, Social Embargo for Venom is up. I talk about this a lot in my review, but this is a movie that somehow slipped through a wormhole from 2004. 
Uh, that's my biggest take. It's a movie that spilled from the pre-MCU era through our crack in time and space. And I think she went on to say that what she means by that is like movies like Daredevil, Ghost Rider, and Catwoman or something like that. Or maybe she wasn't the one who did it. Maybe someone else did. But they were there were people elaborating because I saw this a lot. Like people saying, oh, this movie feels like it's from like the early 2000s. And I always thought that was the point of the movie. I guess watching the trailers in my head, and I think we've talked about that on the show before, I thought that was the point. Like I thought all that was intentional. It was it was to capture the feeling of like the early X Men movies or the early Spider Man movies or Blade or I guess Daredevil, Ghost Rider, and Catwoman. I guess uh, maybe not Catwoman. Obviously, no one's targeting to make a movie like Catwoman. Uh, but I, I or maybe Jonah Hex or something like. I feel like it was it was supposed to kind of feel like that on some level. I mean, look at Eddie Brock. I think Grace Randolph said it as early as the first teaser. He's got beads on his hand, which is very 90s. He writes in a journal, which is very 90s, uh, late 90s, you know, early 2000s. Like, I always thought that was the vibe they were going for, and I thought that was intentional. So it's it's interesting to see movie critics, like, not acknowledge that, oh, that's the point of the movie. Like, they're just using it as a negative critique, which, you know, that's fine. If they're comparing it to Catwoman, obviously that is a negative. But uh, some of them weren't comparing it to Catwoman, and they were just saying it seems like a pre-MCU movie. And I'm like, yeah, but that's the point. Like, MCU changed things. You know, it's like Joker says, it, you change things. Uh, everything became connected. Everything became like an, uh, a standalone story, but also an episode in a greater arc, and it tied everything together. So, of course, this is going to seem pre-MCU, at least in my mind, um, in those regards. Even though it is trying to set up a universe, but it's like, to me, I was thinking more like Iron Man, where, like, this is the beginning of a universe, so it will not feel like modern-day comic book movies. It'll feel like those, you know, around that time in the 2000s, early 2000s, uh, and I guess late 2000s for Iron Man, but um, I guess in some eyes, you know, that was a big negative for them. So I'm interested to see um, Moth Meg's full review. I want to check it out because she mentions that she's going to go over it in more detail in her full review. Um, Chris Sylvia says Venom is a one-man buddy film bonded with an anti-hero origin story, and Tom Hardy pulls it off like only he can. Uh, that seems like a compliment, but I feel like that's also could be like a veiled jab in a way. I don't know. Uh, but uh, maybe I'm just looking for negative stuff. But I don't know. I thought that tweet was pretty good. I retweeted all of these, I think. Um, Tom Jorgensen says, uh, Sorry to say that Venom is pretty much a complete failure, a tonal mess that feels 15 years old, ignoring the storytelling strides that the superhero genre has made in recent years, which we just talked about. A, fu a few fun Venom-centric moments aside, it has nearly nothing to offer. Don't get your hopes up. I mean... Pretty brutal, pretty brutal. And But he also mentions 15 years ago, which is 2003, 2004. So again, a lot of these reviewers sound like they echo each other too. And uh, that happens a lot. I think a lot of these people know each other, they communicate with each other, and they all hit similar targets. They're leaving the movie talking to each other. I don't know, I'm not saying Chris and Mothmeg did, but I just think uh, sometimes that happens where critics are on their way out talking to each other and discussing things or they go have dinner afterwards and they formulate like, you know, like, oh, well, this is what I didn't like. And then the other person's like, I agree. And so they both mention that in their tweets or their reviews um, to kind of, you know, get it out there more. So it seems like they're echoing each other, but sometimes it is just collaboration between critics and stuff. Um, so yeah, pretty brutal words from Tom. It's a bummer he didn't like it that much. Uh, Beatrice Verhoeven says Venom wasn't as bad as everyone was saying it was uh, going to be. Tom Hardy is and always will be a great actor, and I laughed a lot, but I'm not sure whether that was intentional or not. Post credit scene is fire. So apparently those post credit scenes are good, um, or at least according to Beatrice. Uh, but so yes, yeah, again, some people even Perry said that like, should I have laughed at that? I don't know. Was that intentional to be laughed at? I don't know. And I see a lot of that with it, where I guess some of the humor really misses the mark. But then again, Venom has very specific, you know, off the wall humor or humor that is like dark in a way or not maybe as PC as a lot of people might like. And so, uh, so maybe that could be the reason. I don't know. We'll find out when we see the movie ourselves. Uh, then the last one here is from Mike Ryan. And by the way, this link is Hollywood Reporter. I'll put a link to it down below so you can see all these tweets. And if you want to follow these people, please do uh, for their future movie reviews. Uh, I'm fascinated with Venom. The Mike Ryan says the cast seems to uh, all know that they're in a darker superhero movie, except Tom Hardy, who is basically remaking Jim Carrey's Liar Liar. I kind of loved watching this movie in a Rocky Horror type of way. Hey, all right. Uh, at one point, Tom Hardy and Venom make out. <laughs> I think I remember reading that tweet. I, some of these I read really late last night, so I wasn't sure I actually um, read them. 
the way they were intended. But yes, my, Mike Ryan, I guess I do remember your comment there. So I guess Venom and Tom Hardy make out in the movie. That's uh, So be ready for that. Um, I liked, I mean, Rocky Horror, that's great. I don't know if he means like he, he had fun watching it, like people screaming stuff at the screen. That kind of Rocky Horror, um, you know, viewing, which I personally love uh, very much, even though it's kind of overwhelming for me with one ear and everything. It's like people just yelling and screaming. I kind of get, uh, you know, <laughs> it, it works up my anxiety too. Um, but it is still fun to experience. If you haven't experienced Rocky Horror like that, please do. Uh, but then Jim Carrey's Liar Liar. So, and again, uh, Tom Hardy had some comments about things that were cut in the movie. We'll talk about that in the next episode since this kind of has gone on long enough. We'll talk about that in the Rotten Tomato score episode. Um, but for this one, I think we'll end it here with those quotes uh, from the movie. Those are just like the first reactions. I know there were a lot more out there. There's more reviewers. I retweeted a bunch of them so you can check out my Twitter uh, and you can, you know, find these people and check out their reviews when they post them today. Uh, I'm interested. So after the Rotten Tomato score, we'll probably go into a couple of full reviews once those goes up or once I see them go up. Maybe we'll just read a couple excerpts from each one to kind of see what people didn't like. And I'll try my best, obviously, to avoid spoilers of the film. I'm going to keep it to like this type of episode where I don't reveal anything major from the plot. Uh, but hearing Jim Carrey's Liar Liar, that's a, it's like, I like that movie, but if someone's acting like that in a serious movie, I could see where there's conflict there. And I feel like that's valid criticism, whether that's what Mike Ryan saw in the movie, that's his experience. So it's like, no one could be like, for me at least, no one could be like, dude, what movie did you watch? Like he watched a movie and that's how he felt about watching a movie. Don't have to agree with him. That's not, it's not a big deal uh, if he felt that way. Um, but maybe some of us won't see it as such or won't see it that way. Uh, but it's interesting. I think some of these comments are fascinating to me and makes me want to read their full reviews even more. So uh, like I said, we'll cover those in future episodes, uh, you know, over the week leading up to Venom. Uh, and then again, we're going to stream tonight, Tuesday night, September 2nd, uh, or October 2nd. Did I say September in my last video? October 2nd. I probably said September. Uh, so today, October 2nd, we will uh, live stream on YouTube and uh, we'll play Spider-Man PS4, and we'll just talk about all the reviews and everything that went up today, and uh, hopefully and we won't get into any spoilers. We won't talk about spoilers. So let me know what you think of all this down below. Uh, does this make you worried for the movie? Or does it make you, you know, like most of us, I'm sure we don't care. We're like, hey, these are their opinions. Doesn't matter. I'm still gonna go see it, you know, but it's good to temper your expectations. We said that since episode one. Go in feeling as neutral as you can because you'll probably only be pleasantly surprised. And that's a good way for me, at least, to see movies. And so that's what I'm doing here. So it's great to hear all these opinions, but I'm still going to see the movie multiple times this weekend. And I hope it does really well. And I know a lot of you guys too. So let me know your thoughts down below. Thanks for watching my show. As always, like, share, subscribe, all that fun stuff. And I'll see you in the future. Peace.